The next chart type that we're going to look at is, I'll be totally honest, not my favorite. It's a pie chart. If you ask data visualization experts, they'll tell you that pie charts are not the best way to show information. The challenge is, however, is that your manager will ask for it by name and you will be expected to provide it, which is why we're going to show you how to create one. Power BI has two different versions of pie charts. It has a pie chart, which is here. It also has a donut chart, which essentially is a pie chart that's been shot. It's got a hole in the middle. That's the only difference between the two. Now, I'm going to go create a pie chart, a regular old pie chart. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this down by, let's say, the location name. And I'm going to figure out what the sales look like for my location using a pie chart. And you'll see that we have a nice little piece here that shows us that we have our, the squints has got a certain portion and ethical development. If I mouse over it, it tells me what the sales are. Maybe I could figure out something else by going, you know what, I'd like a little bit more information here. I'll go and grab units and throw it in the tooltips. So that when I mouse over, I can actually see what the sales dollars are, what the units are. Hey, why not? You know what? We could probably even go and add something else to this. Maybe we could add budgets to give a more full and clearer picture as to what's actually going on when somebody interacts with the visual. It also shows the percentage of the whole is in the uh, little brackets underneath the name behind sales, which is great. Now, can I do more with this visual? Absolutely. We have the ability to break things down by details. So I could look at this and say, well, that's kind of interesting to know how big these are compared to everybody else. But what if I were to come back to the categories and drag this into the details area? It now segregates things by details. But one thing that we do lose here is we lose our legend. It's gone. We don't know who is what in this particular case. So now it's a really good idea to come over to our formatting area here and say, show me a legend so that at least I know what these main colors actually represent. Now, personally, I prefer to see my legend down near the bottom. I think it's a, a better place for it for me. Um, I might also like to see this font size increase, maybe not quite that much, but something a little bit bigger so I can see what's actually happening. And of course, I could go back and tweak the titles and do other things to this as well. The challenge with pie charts um, is when you start going with too much information. We have the ability to control some of these things in different ways. I could grab category and I could say, you know what, instead of the details, why don't I move it here under location name? At this point now, I can activate my drill down. So I can drill into ethical development and I can see the shape of the pie chart and how it actually all works out here again. If I mouse over it, all those tooltip texts are there. The key danger here is when you start to go and add way too much stuff though, like item name. Let's put that into the details field. And notice what happens to this thing. Holy smokes, look at all those slices. That is crazy. There's no way you're going to be able to figure that out, especially when you realize you drill back up and that most granular level of detail, that's what's being used here too. Yuck. Okay, so this is one of the things that we definitely want to watch out for. One of the big rules of thumbs with pie charts is always to try and make them as few data series as possible. When you actually get into a state where you've got lots and lots and lots of series, then it makes sense to move to something like a bar chart or a column chart to actually show that data better. Again, these charts are all cross filterable. They'll cross filter your other visuals. As a matter of fact, we see some interesting things with these as well. I'm going to go quickly cook up a bar chart here. I'm going to throw the categories on it with budget. And I'm going to just go and click on canned beer and you'll see that it actually will cross filter the pie chart. We get some, some funky little slices going on in this particular case here, which all makes sense. What if I were to go and do something slightly different though? What if I were to throw another chart on and this one, I was to throw on the end of month and we won't aggregate it and we'll throw our budgets on here as well. I'm going to select a specific month. So this is now going to show a slightly different version of the pie chart where it filters differently. You can see that there's not much hop or sales happening apparently that affects all of these individual little categories in those locations. So this is, uh, this is where things start to, uh, to get a little bit more interesting because you can start seeing what happens in the cross filtering and shading. There's a very tiny slice in here, very narrow, but it's actually got some big numbers that we can actually play around with and, and see what's actually going on. So it can be a neat visual, but again, if it's got too many data points, it's a better idea to actually shift it over into a different type of visual to get better intel.